Topaz Studio 2 has just dropped. So stay with us and we will go through what it is, what it does and how it works right after the intro. This is a new Topaz Studio 2, which is a rebuild on Topaz Studio. At the moment, this is a better version uh, until the release comes out, but it gives you an idea on, on what it does and how it works. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's been a fairly significant UI change. So the user interface looks much different to what it did before. This is really more in line with the AI tools. And I think is much, simpler to use and much easier to understand. So there's the sensor area here, which is where you can load your photo. You can either click on open and browse or drag it in. There's a tool section up the top. And then there's a special, like the effects layer on the right hand side. So I'm gonna go into, or I'm gonna load photo of a kangaroo. And you can see it's not the best photo. It's a little bit blurry. So what we can do is we could either apply the individual filters to try and improve this photo, or we could apply a look. And so a look is basically a grouping of filters um, that you could apply straight away. So let's say I wanted an artistic look. I could just apply a colored pencil and click on apply. And it's applied whatever filters were within that look to achieve that specific um, vision. I suppose but in this case I would rather uh, make my own edits so I'm going to just delete that look I'm going to go into filters so filters are grouped by style color or fix style are all of the fairly you know make it look like a painting style um, filters color is you know anything to do with the, the color aspect and fix are all of the typical adjustments that you may make to your photo. So you'll see that the, the kangaroo is not perfect, it's a little bit blurry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with AI clear because I think that might adjust it a little bit. And you can see already that's made a fairly big difference. It, it's a lot sharper um, around the, the main kangaroo. One thing to notice is when I put AI clear in, over here you can see the original photo uh, and then AI clear. So this software is layered. What that means is that all of this is non-destructive and I can switch things around, I can add, delete, and it won't affect the underlying image, which is really, really helpful. So I've got AI clear. Now I'm gonna go into add filter and I'm gonna apply some basic adjustments. So these are things like exposure, clarity, and, and those sorts of things. So I'm gonna reduce the exposure slightly, increase the clarity, decrease the shadow, bring the highlights up just a little bit, and drop the blacks. So I'm happy with how that is. Um, and as I mentioned, at the moment, this is, it hasn't affected the main photo. So I can always turn the eye on or off to see uh, the impact that it has. So that's really, really helpful because it means that if I don't like this, I can just delete it and not have to worry about going back to a previous version of the photo. One other really useful tool is I can also click on add filter and I'm gonna go into precision contrast. Now, a lot of these are a global so I'm gonna make this fairly extreme and I'm gonna ramp it all up and so what this will do is this will apply all of those changes to the whole photo now I don't necessarily want that I may only want these changes to be applied to the kangaroo thankfully this software has masking so if you see the square with a circle in it if you click on that that will add a mask to the layer and what this does is this lets you paint in where you want it to be affected. So by default, anything that's white 
is um, where the mask or the adjustment would be applied. Anything that's black is where it would be hidden. Now I could click on brush and paint wherever I didn't want this to be applied. But since more than 50% of the photo I don't want this mask on, all you do is right click and click on invert. And so what you'll see is now it, the whole mask is black, which means it's not going to apply anywhere. So now I just click on reveal, then the brush, and I just brush in where I want the mask to be applied. Now I'm going to be pretty quick and dirty with this just because of the, it's for a video rather than a good photo. So just paint through where you want the mask to be applied. And what this will do is this will then apply that to um, just the area that you've painted. And so you can see in the mask section over here where I've painted white is where it's applied. Now you could apply gradients, um, you could mask by color, luminance and so on. In this case, I'm just going to do it by brush. So I'm really happy with this um, in terms of the mask, but you can see, obviously, I've taken that to extremes. So I'm going to bring it down a lot just to where I'm happy with it. So I think if I bring the high and the medium up, that might look a little bit better. And now exactly the same way as I did before, I may want to precision detail. So what I'm going to do is add mask. Same thing again, I'm going to right click, invert, click on reveal, then the brush, and I'm going to paint where I want these to be applied. So exactly the same as last time, again, quick and dirty. Paint where I want it to be, uh, the detail to be improved. And now I go into precision detail and I can adjust the small detail or the medium detail or the, the large detail as required. So I think that's worked out fairly well. Um, but I may also want to make this a little bit more artistic. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to go into add filter. This time I'm going to go into AI remix and I'm going to leave it on the a neon rise um, preset but I'm going to drop the opacity down so it's sort of just just in between so you can also change blend mode and so this will give you a whole lot of different options um, so I may decide that actually um, don't like lighting. I can just work through and see which ones I prefer. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of different um, different options. Each of them have very different effects. So I'm going to go luminosity in this case because I quite like how this has worked. And at the moment, this is a lot of different filters that you can turn on or off to get the photo how you like. But what you could do, as I showed you earlier in terms of looks, is you can actually save this as a look. So then you just click on save look and I'm going to go um, paint image and then just click on OK. So what this means is you can then apply a look that contains all of these settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of these settings so that I'm back to my base photo. Now all I do is click on add look, click the category until I get down to my looks and over here I have paint image. So I can just apply that and you'll see all of my settings have come across. So if I'm happy with this photo or as happy as I could be I can then just go on export and I can save this as whatever I want. At the moment I'm saving as a JPEG but you can change your various settings um, to whatever it is you want it to be as well as changing the quality and the colour space. 
So I like this, I'm going to click on export and now that's exported this um, to the computer. So I hope this was fairly useful in terms of how it works. One other thing I haven't shown you is up the top here there's the view button. If you press that you can get a, um, a split or you could go a side by side horizontal. And so this shows you what it was compared to where you are now. So you can see there's a very big difference between the two um, in terms of what it was and, and what I've done. So I've put a link in the description below where you can download or purchase the software. There's also a discount code. Um, feel free to use that and you should get a discount on your purchase. If you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Um, if you thought this was useful, give me a like. Um, subscribe to my page, visit the website, or uh, let me know. Appreciate your feedback. Thank you.